Dennis Lynn writing today, free agent and former Padres left fielder Tommy Pham remains among the team's potential options, according to league sources. Is this why? Let me ask you this. Forget about Tim LaCastro. I know you want to Aww. talk about everyone else. Is this why Jackson Merrill is getting some time at center? Because if you do sign a veteran like Pham, he's not playing center, <laughs> then you have to have room for Merrill. So if Merrill's moving over, is that because you recognize – you might you might have to plug in a veteran in a corner, and Jackson Merrill might have to be your your center fielder this year, not your left fielder. So once again, filling holes with players, not because that's where they they're going to excel at, because you don't have any other option. It's, pre it's pretty simple. I mean, the, the reason why Jackson Merrill is playing center field because they don't have a center fielder. The reason why Jackson Merrill was in left field because they don't have a left fielder. If this, if the, if the roles were reversed and they had Trent Grisham still here and they didn't have a shortstop, where are they putting Jackson Merrill? They're putting him at shortstop. Sure. Yeah. You're right. They're not saying, well, you know what? That's, I think he might be better as a center fielder. Like the reason why he's in center field and playing center field is because they don't have any center fielders. Mm -hmm. um, it goes back to like, are you doing this because you, you believe in these players that they could play there? Or are you are you doing it because you have no other option and you have to have a physical body out there? And because Jackson Merrill is one of your top rated prospects, and because you believe in him more than you know any other player that you have vying for those positions, that's why he was in center field. Right. Is it that's a really good point? Like, is it sexier? I mean, I'm looking even like at the chat or comments 70470 started with Timor on YouTube, and people are like, you know, well, what about like, you know, Zokar and, and Profar and LaCastro and Ornelius? And so here's who who hit two home runs yesterday. Like, guys, these options Mercado. aren't exactly ideal. That's why a player like Tommy Pham makes a lot of sense. I mean, what are we talking about? It's February and we're talking about we're not talking about reserve players. I feel like I'm AI. We're talking about regulars. We're not talking about reserves. They don't have regulars. The yeah. season starts in three weeks. They don't have regulars. And, and nothing against any of these players that I'm going to be, I'll read off That's the your list here. Rip, yeah. But, <laughs> but um, they, how many other teams in baseball would these players be starting on? That's a good question. I don't know the answer to that. That's a good question. Maybe a couple that are just like the bottom feeders of baseball, like the Oakland A's. Uh, who else? You know, like, one of the worst teams in baseball. Mm -hmm. that, like I'm, I can't think of anybody else besides the Oakland A's right now. But you get my point. Is how many other teams in baseball would you have these guys being a starting? Who are outfielder? these guys? Let's hear who these guys are. This is from Kevin's article today. He said that the uh, outfield competition is heating up. Ooh. Here's the outfield <laughs> options. It's a very long pregnant pause. I liked it for the Padres. Yeah, okay. It's part of the whole shtick, John. I like it. It's very good. Jose Zocar. Okay, he is he is the definition of a reserve outfielder, is he not? Oh, the he is the clear great defender de definition. Can run a little, just that's great a fourth outfielder or fifth. Absolutely, I'm with you. Okay, Bryce Johnson. I don't know who he is. <laughs> that's what I mean. You know what I mean? Like I, he doesn't scream 44 home run season to me. No. I don't know if he screams Juan Soto replacement with a higher OPS. Well, I didn't know this. He, uh, it, Kevin says here, after banging his knee, Johnson had his x-rays that were negative and Schilte termed Johnson's status day-to-day. -day. Aren't we all? Okay, who else? Tim LaCastro. Tim LaCastro, the or, speedster. Or, or LaCastro, however you LeCastro. say it. LaCastro. The speedster. Yeah. This guy's Ricky Henderson. A veteran of seven seasons, LaCastro or LaCastro. Has played 290 games and has hit 228 with a 337 slugging and 616 plate appearances. Okay. He has 45 bases and 50, or he stole 45 bases and 50 attempts. That's Ca pretty good, by the way. <laughs> That's really good. But Castro has started at least 21 games in each outfield spot. Okay. He, to me, might be a fifth outfielder because he can run. So carry on. Jacob Marcy. Okay. The youngster the less heralded of the prospects in camp trying to make the jump from double a to the Padres outfield. Marcy has continued to tear up Arizona. The 22 year old Marcy, the organization's number 13 prospect was MVP of Arizona fall league and has started the spring by impressing coaches with his approach to the plate and aggressiveness in the field. So far he's three for 10 with two doubles and four walks. Okay. All right. Oscar 
Mercado. Oh, this is the guy that's raking. Hit two home runs in one game. The most experienced of the outfield competitors has played 298 games for three teams over five major league seasons. That's the most experience you have. That includes 198 starts in the outfield. Mercado hit 269 with 15 home runs and 25 doubles and 482 plate appearances as a rookie in 2019. This spring so far, he's two for seven with two home runs and two walks. Those are the two home runs he hit yesterday. Jackson Merrill. We know about Merrill. Must we say anymore? No. I kind of want to read what AC wrote about it, though. Okay, you can. (laughs) The Padres' number two prospect was a shortstop until this year. He has taken to playing the grass even better than most in the organization projected. Merrill has impressed veterans with his maturity, baseball IQ, energy, confidence, and plate discipline. How many games has he played? He can also run and has power potential. This spring, he's two for eight, the double. Okay, right. (laughs) Okay. Is that the list? Cal Mitchell. Okay. A wrist injury sidelined the Rancho Bernardo High graduate last year while playing uh, AAA in the Pirates organization. Um, He was designated for assignment in September and signed with the Padres in November. Uh, Mitchell is a left-hander, former top 30 prospect for the Pirates. He hit 226 for them and 232 plate appearances in 2022. So far this spring, two for eight with a home run. Is that the list? Finally. (laughs) Okay. Jerkson Profar. The veteran whose best seasons have come as a member of the Padres, who signed a one-year, $1 million deal mostly to provide depth and leadership, he could also start the season in left field. Profar, a switch hitter, has, has consistently competitive at-bats and often finds himself in the middle of rallies. Um, so far this spring, he's over to. I mean, do, does, that, does that group of players vying for potentially not one, but two outfield spots and a DH spot, does that group tell you in it for 162? Or does it tell you what Darren's been talking about and what Dennis is now writing about that you've got to, not like an option, you have to go find a veteran outfielder that has more than 200 games and a 200 career average. Like Tommy Pham is in that footprint. Like he's coming off a good year. Yes, he's in his 30s. Yes, he's had some down years in the second half of his career, but Tommy Pham is nowhere near the caliber of the players that you just referenced today. Merrill's future, who knows? It could be very bright. Jacob, uh, Jacob Marcy's future could be bright. But the players that you just referenced, none of them have the accolades of what Pham accomplished in 2023, nor anywhere close <clears throat> to what Pham did a year ago. I just don't see it. I don't see how you don't go out and at least bring in a real competent everyday major league outfielder it doesn't solve everything no you still may need merrill to play a lot which is fine uh you still might rely on a jacob marcy or whomever maybe one of these guys breaks through but to ask for two of them to get regular abs for a hundred and whatever games is asking too much yeah it you gotta go and get tommy Pham. <laughs> right after reading that uh you can't read that and actually see it on paper and think to yourself yeah that's fine if you had an outfield of tommy fam jackson merrill and fernando, fernando tatis, tatis jr. jr now we're talking a little bit i like it there's some upside real upside is it the best that you could possibly do with the situation with the situation that you have i mean i guess yeah probably is mm-hmm. um it's not it's not an outfield of juan soto jackson merrill and uh fernando tatis jr which is what it could have been true you're right with that, but you got to work with what you have. And if working with the roster that they have, and that's the only options they're going to choose from, you're in for you're in for trouble. Let's go to the phones here. If you want to weigh in on this, up oh, okay. Uh, guess we'll, not. Call back. Who was that, Chris? Chris, if you want to weigh in, eight seven 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 six seven four seven sixty eight seven 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 six seven but, four but, seven but, sixty. And, and the thing with Tommy Fam is when we've talked about it a lot. It's all about what he's going to want and what 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 he's going to demand in free agency. I know I put out a crazy it, number of like twelve million or thirteen million or whatever. It, if it's anything under ten, how could you afford to not do it? But aren't you kind of like this is like desperate times call for desperate measures? Like you're kind of in a corner, and you could tell me, you know what, we would have gotten Fam for eight, but he, he's asking for nine. Like, there's no way the gap is $5 million. Well, then that speaks to the difference 
in the organization with the ownership group now that before an extra two, $3 million was nothing. Like as far as like, hey, we can get this guy, but it might cost us a little more than what we projected. Peter Seidler, do it. I'll, whatever, do it. Is that the same case now? Like if Tommy Pham, say, I have no idea what Tommy Pham is going to get in free agency. None. But I'm just going to I mean, throw It's out, not a crazy number. Say, say, say the number he wants is nine. Okay. Nine million for one year. Yep. Padres are only willing to go seven. Okay. Are, are, are they really going to lose out on Tommy Pham over $2 million? That's, that's my point. How much money have they spent this offseason? Like actual dollars. You've got Matsui, $3.25 million guaranteed. You have Profar, $1 million guaranteed. How much is Wusako getting? Between one and two million per year or something like that? It's small. It's small. You've spent, you've spent $5 million and you've freed up tens of millions. And I'm not just saying that. Soto, Hater, Snell, you're a hundred million light from where you were. You can't go spend another 2.5 on a real veteran. Outfielder, did you know that the Giants actually have a higher payroll than the San Diego Padres now? It doesn't surprise me at all. Padres are middle of the pack payroll. And if I looked at the Giants roster, I'd be like, really? Right. That roster is well over 160 something million. The Padres are below that. I, that doesn't surprise me. It's all we've talked about all offseason. I mean, this salary could come in, Jim, like below league average i think we looked at that in terms of dollars spent it could be below league average but mm -hmm. still top top half of teams i just think you're kind of fooling yourself if you're the padres if you think the names i just read off are good enough i i right. am I, I am with uh jackson merrill he's gonna be on this team right. <laughs> he's gonna be on this team to start opening day i hope he performs i hope he lives up to somewhat of the pedestal that everybody's putting him on so far I want to see him succeed. I'm just like cautiously, I'm 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 cautious about it. Mm -hmm. I'm optimistic, but I, I am definitely a little worried. Okay, but uh, everybody else in the list, no, uh, there's nobody else. Like I, I can live with if it was just Jackson Merrill vying for one spot and he got the job, I can live with it. He's one of your top rated prospects. Sure, he is talked about like he's the next coming of, I mean, Bryce Harper or sure. whatever, right? And so. Let's see what he got. Let's see what he has. Put him out there. Let's go. But everybody else, like, give me a break. They're all bench guys at best. And so that's why Tommy Pham, like we've been saying, if it's going to cost you an extra two, $3 million to go do it from what you were willing to give him from what he wants, then why aren't you doing it? To, you rather have Cal Mitchell. And I, and I don't know even know if Tommy Pham is going to be even good for you this year, but at least Tommy Pham is a veteran that you kind of know what you're getting and expecting from him. Yeah. Cal Mitchell or, uh, I mean, jerks and profile, whatever, but come on, give me a break. No, I agree. Brent, what do you got? That was what the caller was going to say that he, his whole thing was sometimes you just have to plug in these younger guys. He goes, you think James Altman was ready to go last year when the Dodgers just threw him out there? He said, no, sometimes you just got to, yeah, but he's also, here's the difference. James Altman was 26. Yeah. You know that? I mean, that's not to say, guess what? There are 19 year olds that have paid huge dividends. Fernando Tatis Jr. Yeah. Or there's a zillion examples. I don't know when Bryce Harper broke through, but he was young. It's much different when you have to fill just one spot. Than two. Yeah, no, I, I'm completely with you. The idea that, listen, Merrill's going to be on the big league team to break camp. Yeah. That's what Kevin wrote today, unless things go sideways. He's going to be on the team clearly at this point. But if I'm AJ Preller, and I have to think about this through the lens of Preller, like I need cover everywhere. You're under a magnifying glass. You may lose your job if the team doesn't make the postseason. I heard what the owner said. He wasn't exactly backing his GM at the beginning of February. The cover of at least getting fam, to your point, if you get fam and doesn't hit, you say, well, I look, look at his numbers. He's produced before. He's been on winning teams. He had a very good year for a team that was in the World Series a year ago. If it doesn't work out, so be it. I think the issue with Merrill, and again, I, I understand it, and maybe now is his time. And if he doesn't hit and he's the only <clears> rookie that's a position player on your team and, and he doesn't hit, okay. that that's You could overcome it if you're A.J. Preller, but if it's, if it's Merrill and it's Marcy, yeah. And now Cal the Mitchell team is struggling or... and these players individually aren't performing. It's like, again, I think a lot of the attention is going to turn to Preller. It's not as much about Merrill or Marcy. It's about what decision-making process was used to think that this was the combination that was going to help you win right now. If you have an outfield of Tommy Pham, Jackson Merrill, uh, Fernando Tatis Jr., 
Jose Gokar. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can you can and and and, and Jerkson Profar. I mean, that, that is it the best outfield ever? No. Does it like scream? You know these massive numbers that you could be putting up if you had Juan Soto here. No, right. But I would feel way more confident with that group of guys than if you had two of the guys that I named off the list. Like if it was Jackson Merrill, Jerkson Profar, Jose Zocar, Fernando Tatis Jr., Cal Mitchell, and like Tim LaCastro or LaCastro, whatever his name. Mm-hmm. What? How do you pronounce his last name? Yeah, you know, it's 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 a big difference there.